what's cooking on your loom? Well, today I'm cooking up these fingertip pot holders. Woo woo! <laughs> so you have oven mitts for your fingertips. These can be used for instant pots. I've got two of them. Today we're going to make one of them today. You can make two of them with the instructions, of course. Hello. And <laughs> I want to show you how to make them on the knitting loom. So hold on to your fancy pots and get your instant pots out with ease. And we have two of them. You can get your um, handles touched without any problem and save those hands for more knitting and crochet here today on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. You can get the written pattern at our website and all the information on the yarn and the loom used down at the blog link below in the video description. If you'd like an ad-free version, feel free to get that at our Ravelry and Etsy stores as well. So let's go into some of the stuff on the pattern. Of course, we're gonna have a right and left-handed video tutorial, so be sure and click down in the video links below. And uh, let's get into some of this stuff here. You need one ball of each color or uh, two balls of the same color because you're going to be grabbing two strands as one uh, with a number four medium weight cotton yarn or you're going to want to use wool. You do not use acrylic because it's going to melt on you so you want a natural fiber that is not going to do that such as cotton or wool. All right I am using rosemary colored in this peaches and cream uh, and black currant for this purple color in my samples today. For the loom I'm using the knitting board or KB Looms basics loom. This is part of their basic loom kit and uh, you can get that on Amazon or on kblooms.com. We do have links to get it on Amazon if you'd like. And of course you can make two. Um, you'll need a locking stitch marker. Um, well, just a stitch marker. You don't have to have a locking stitch marker. And your loom tool plus uh, scissors and a tapestry needle. And that's about all you need today. So let's dive in and start on our cast on. This is a cast on for a non bulky drawstring cast on. This is being used to uh, drawstring cast on and close the center hole when you're working with multiple strands of yarn. Uh, usually what happens if you work with multiple strands, it has a gaping large hole and it's really hard to close up or you might even pull too hard and break your yarn. So this is used uh, on this method here. It's a new method and I'm using uh, four rounds to slowly increase the stitches around my loom so my loom is divisible by four that works out well for this particular pattern uh, let's go ahead and get cast it on I'm going to start um, by making a slip knot wrap that around your finger twice take the back loop over the front once take the back loop over the front again and make a nice large slip knot don't worry about it being too big uh, make it however you like if you didn't like that method and um, go ahead and set that down for a moment I'll pick up our loom make sure you have a stitch marker handy and I'm placing my stitch marker here on this second to last stitch on this lower peg here this is just where I'm doing on this loom and I'm going to be working in this direction we do have that right and left handed video so um, the right handed video is going clockwise and the left handed video is going counterclockwise all right so I'm pl placing it on the second one in and then we're going to be placing the slip knot on our last stitch okay so go ahead and pick up your slip knot and place it on the inside of the loom and then you're just going to bring up the uh, anchor this is going to be our anchor peg we're going to bring up our slip knot and put it on the anchor peg which is the last peg here okay and just pull it and you don't have to tighten this slip knot up at all all right now we will begin you're going to um, go around the um, first peg and wrap in front all right so this is round one we're going to go behind and slip the next three pegs one two three okay and then we're going to go in front of peg four and we're wrapping and then we're going to go behind the next three pegs and wrap in front of the fourth peg and go around so we are uh, slipping three and wrapping around uh, one slip three and wrap around one so you see when I go around this corner you have one two three that gets skipped and that's okay that's exactly what we want to do so wrap around one go behind three wrap around one go behind three and 
I've got a break here, but that's okay because it's going to get pulled out with my long um, uh, drawstring. Okay, wrap around that one, slip behind three, wrap around one, slip behind around three. You're just repeating until the beginning. So if you're looking at the written pattern for this, which you can find down in the video links below, um, you'll see a diagram for what this looks like. All right, so here is my last peg that I'm wrapping and I'm going around one, two, three, which includes that very last peg. So we're skipping the one that has that anchor yarn on it. And now we're going on to cast on round two. Now we're going to flat knit the first peg. So it helps if you pull the yarn uh, all the way back so it's nice and tight when you do this, so it doesn't pull all the way off. This first one is a little harder, lift up and over. All right, here we go. All right, now we're going to uh, slip the next stitch, okay, the next peg. We're gonna wrap in front of the next peg after that. And then we're going to uh, slip the next peg and then wrap the next peg. We're repeating those other steps. So we're wrapping one and knitting over. So that's a flat knit. Then we slip and then we wrap and slip. Okay, so here's a repeat. Knit. Slip one wrap one, slip one, repeat, knit one, this is a flat knit, slip one, wrap one, slip one, knit one, slip one, wrap one, slip one, knit one, Slip one, wrap one, slip one, knit one. Just hit those controls in your video to slow down or pause if you need to. Uh, after I've knit this one, I'm slipping the next one, wrapping and slipping. And now I'm on my very last stitch that needs to be knit. We're going to slip one, wrap one, and then slip that last stitch. So again, we're going behind where this last anchor yarn is here. All right, we're on to cast on round three. We're going to knit the first peg. Okay, now we're going to wrap the next peg. So notice that we have every other peg uh, wrapped before we begin this. It's either knit or it's wrapped. Okay, so now we're going to knit the first one. We're going to wrap the next one and then knit that third stitch. So knit first peg, wrap second peg, knit third peg, and then slip. Okay, so you're gonna have three together and then one uh, empty peg. So we're going to, to yeah, we're going to repeat that. Knit one, wrap one, knit one. Slip, knit one, wrap and knit, slip, knit, wrap, knit, and slip. And if you get going and you lost your place, just look back here and say, okay, I have three, then a blank, three, then a blank, three, then a blank, or empty, three, and an empty. Here we go. Knit, wrap, knit, slip, knit, wrap, and knit. Slip and knit, wrap and knit, slip, knit, 
knit. This is the last of our repeats. Wrap and knit. Okay. And then our last one is going to be uh, slipped. Okay. So now we're going to begin casting on round four. This is the final round in the non bulky drawstring cast on. Uh, you're going to go ahead and remove at this time the anchor yarn. Okay. Just lift up, take it off. You can pull that right out. Slip knot. There it goes. Just slips right out. And now we want to knit three pegs. One, two, I have to pull this one a little tight. Let's see. Almost like a U-wrap knit. There we go. And three. Okay. And I'm sure you guessed it. You're going to wrap that one. So all pegs after this um, round are going to be um, they're, they're going to be full, so you're going to have stitches on every single one of these. So go ahead and knit the next stitch. Okay. And knit. And then wrap. And then knit three. Okay. So go ahead and uh, finish out this round. Uh, pause your video, or I'm going to jump to this next section because you don't need to see me doing this. But now that's all repeated, finish out this round. And pause your video, and I'll meet you back uh, at the end of this round for the next step. Okay, so we're at the end of our round, and then you just uh, continue by continuing on with your pattern. And the drawstring, you really shouldn't worry about actually pulling until you have a lot more of your knitting done. So go ahead and work on all your knitting stuff first before trying to pull on this. There's no need. It's just going to be all tight right here for quite a while, and then it will close up rather nicely. All right, so we're going to continue on. Our next round uh, for the main pot holder is we're going to be e-wrapping all of the next stitches. So this is round one, and we're going to e-wrap. So we've made sure to uh, wrap this last peg here to finish it. We're going to e-wrap all stitches. So in this pattern, uh, it's going to work better to do an e-wrap stitch and it works, um, it works really well because of the pot holder and we need a little bit more bulk uh, and that's really for the, um, the heat and everything that you're going to be enduring when you use a pot holder. And then we're going to have pearl ridges in between. So this is going to be a garter stitch pattern. So this is a quick way to do a um, garter stitch. So you pre-wrap the loom with the e-wrap and then before you start knitting over all of your e-wrap stitches, you just begin your purl round. So we're going to e-wrap all these, pause your video to catch up with where I am, and then we'll begin round two, which is purl. All right, so here we go. And if you want to go ahead and lock in this last stitch, you're more than welcome to, especially if you have to set this down. Go ahead and lock that in on the last stitch and then bring your yarn forward and you're going to begin by knitting over the e-wraps and i usually do a few at a time okay yeah let's do three here you can do three to five something like that and then bring your yarn down below this first stitch and pull up and we're going to purl all stitches so this is a quick way to do a garter stitch round and there you go. So you just purl after you've already knit over those stitches. And then knit over some more and then do those. So if this is your first video <laughs> making purl stitches, that's okay. This is a beginner friendly pattern, um, real easy. So you've e-wrapped, you've wrapped around, and then now we just want to take our loom tool and scoop up the yarn from below like we're pulling a pearl from the ocean, except this pearl is spelled P-U-R-L. We're gonna pull up and we have two loops because we're holding two as one. Take off the old loop, put on the new loop, 
and pull. And I'm just calling this one loop, even though there's two strands together, we're just operating with them all together. All right, so continue on this round. All right. And then you are going to repeat that. So when you uh, finish up, you're gonna come back to this point here and you're going to repeat that step eight more times. So you're gonna get nine ridges. Your knitting should look like this. It, you won't have this tightly pulled yet, but you're going to um, have eight of these, or well, you'll have this round, which is this one right here, and then you'll have eight more. So you'll have nine of these ridges. I suggest using a row counter or making tally marks to check that off because you won't be able to, or at least in this loom, you can't really stick your hands down here, or maybe, your maybe you can, I can't, but you can't really measure um, with your hands to see if it's going to make a good um, uh, size. So this is right where my thumb is. I have large hands. So if you have smaller hands, that would be enough for, um, for here, but mine, you have, see how this side is short. We're gonna make this other side longer. So go ahead and do the nine rounds and uh, count that off because when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and uh, uh, reduce or take, take down these stitches here to create your opening, okay? We're gonna do a bind off next. So go ahead, make that repeat, pause your video, and I will see you there. So let's go ahead and move on to binding off in the middle of your pattern. We're actually going to uh, bind off half of our stitches and then we're going to uh, continue uh, that row out or that round out and then we will immediately cast back on and that's going to create that opening for us. Okay, so uh, we want to do a basic bind off where we're going to be continuing with the E-wrap stitch. So we're gonna E-wrap the first two stitches. So peg one, E wrap and knit off, peg two, E wrap and knit off. And in the basic bind off, you do have to start with knitting two stitches, um, and then when we repeat, you're only doing one at a time. So that's the first, that's the only time you're going to do two at the same time. So now we're going to um, move the second stitch to the first and knit over, knit off, move that first stitch over one. Okay, and now we have an empty peg. All right, now we're gonna begin our repeat of binding off. We're going to E-wrap and knit over, move the second stitch onto the first and knit over and move that stitch over one and repeat. So we've got two of them bound off. We want to get all the way over to this peg over here and have 16, I believe that's right. Let's count it out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, yes. So this one will be empty and um, the exact opposite mirrored one from your very first peg is going to be the first one with the stitch on that we leave. So go ahead and bind off until you get to uh, this point and I will show you what to do next. We'll see you there. So round three, we have bound off the first 16 stitches and now we need to E-wrap knit to the end of the row. You already have this uh, 17th stitch already worked from the basic bind off. So you've got 16 empty pegs. Go ahead and E-wrap all the remaining pegs and that will finish out that row. And you can leave most of all these already um, wrapped because uh, the next time we work on them, we're gonna be purling around and um, it'll just um, leave it in that sort of quick method that we were doing before. Go ahead and wrap to the end. And I suggest going ahead and knitting over these last several stitches here. Okay, you'll see why in just a moment. So I've got those locked in. And now we want to cast on again. We're just making that opening uh, and then we close it immediately. So we wanna use the chain uh, cast on method. So go ahead and make this very last stitch nice and loose. And I'm going to put down my knitting tool and pick up a crochet hook. So this is a um, size F hook from Furls. You could use any size that's going to fit through uh, in between these pegs easily. All right, so the way you do that is you're going to um, put your working yarn in between your um, last peg that has a loop on it and your next peg that needs a loop on it. And then this loose loop is going to go behind the pegs here. So we're going to put our hook through there, go ahead and tighten it up. So we're going to work around this loop here and then we're going to yarn over 
on our crochet hook and then pull through. So I'm gonna turn it so the little drop goes onto the inside and pull through to my loop in the back. Make sure to go through both strands, okay? And then you can pull a little slack out and we're gonna go around the next loop, which is our peg one. All right, so yarn over and pull through to create a loop there and go around. So yarn over and pull through. And you don't have to use this method where I'm holding it like this. I just do this when I am crocheting. So if you're not used to it, you're just simply putting your hook here in between, taking the yarn and wrapping it around and then pulling it through. So I wrap it around and then I pull this way to give it some tension and then I pull through like this. Okay, so continue casting that on, um, come all the way down to the end, and I'll show you how to uh, finish that out. Pause your video and I will see you there. I'm coming down to the end and I have uh, one more stitch that needs, uh, or one more peg that needs a stitch on it. And then I've got one loop here remaining. Um, you can put this last loop on this last peg, but then you really need this extra chain that finishes it out and connects it really well. So I just uh, lay this last loop created onto the first peg with a loop already on it. Okay, so go ahead and tighten that up. And then I'm going to um, play, uh, move my crochet hook, I don't need that anymore, and go ahead and uh, knit that over to lock it in. Uh, and then I'm going to um, Pearl all the rest of these. So we're going to knit over and purl. So we're doing the remaining one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 uh, stitches purled. And you could also um, knit, uh, purl those other two together on here. So it just only makes a slight difference in what it looks like, but it's totally fine. So just go ahead and knit these over and purl the remaining round. And you are already joined up back in the round now. All right, so continue that on, pause your video, and I'll meet you back for the next set of instructions. See you soon. So we're going to be repeating rounds one through two, 14 more times. So it's going to be a little bit longer on this next section than it was on the very first one. So just continue by e-wrapping all around and then um, making a round of purl stitches, okay? Repeat that two row repeat again, 14 times. You'll have 14 of these ridges here. And then when we come back, we will make a modified drawstring bind off and close this off together. We'll see you soon. I just want to jump to this image right here to show you um, what the 14 rows is going to look like. The um, ridges are going to be this long. Um, it hits about to my knuckles and I have very large hands. I'm six foot. Uh, very large hands are the same size as my husband's. So um, if you have larger hands, you're going to want that size. If you have very petite hands, you might want to skip a few um, rounds of um, repeats. So you might only want 12 repeats of the rounds. So this is what it looks like and it'll shrink up a little bit in the wash. Uh, but it fits most people. So um, you can get two of them out of this. All right, so jump on until you get to the rounds you need. We'll meet back up and I'll show you how to bind off. Okay, we are ready for our modified drawstring bind off and we need to set it up first. We're gonna be doing an E-wrap round and when we E-wrap, we'll just do a few at a time and move the stitches over. So just go ahead and uh, E-wrap knit the first two stitches and you're going to bring your even stitch or your second one over to your first. So you're e-wrapping everything, moving the second stitch or the even stitches over to the odd stitches and then just knit over, okay? So go ahead and continue doing that. Knitting to moving the even over to the odd and then knitting over, okay? Continue that and repeat. We'll go around the loom and I'll show you the next step. So this is just the setup for the um, bind off. All right, continue going around, pause your video. I'll meet you back up at the end of this round. See you soon. 
Okay, so we are ready to begin um, round one of our modified drawstring bind off. So we have half of our amount of stitches here, so it's already uh, decreased here. So we want to um, go ahead and make a long tail, and you want to wrap your uh, loom around one and a half times. You can do it to up to two, that's fine, it gives you extra room. Uh, this tail will get uh, pulled through, but we're going to be working it around our loom uh, every other stitch. In this, um, uh, in this configuration here. So we're gonna be working all the way around, taking off every other stitch, and then we'll make a second round taking off the remaining ones. The first time we go around, we're going to be pulling through purl-wise. So we're going to use our loom tool and we're gonna pull up and through this very first stitch, just like you're purling, and we're gonna pull it all the way through, okay? And you can go ahead and take that off of the loom and now we're going to skip the next stitch and go behind that peg and then do it, uh, repeat that on this peg here. Okay, so that was one, two, three, four, five. We're on our fifth stitch over, our fifth peg over. Pull all the way through and let that fall off. Skip one, so go behind uh, these three pegs here and go through the next stitch. Pull all the way through, let that fall off and skip behind the next three pegs and pull through the next one purl wise let that drop off and turn it skip the next one and go to this one pull all the way through let that come off And skip this next one. Purl all the way through. Again, you can pause your video, speed it up, slow it down, whatever you need. Take that off and skip behind the next pegs. And pull through. Take that off and skip and this will be the last one on this round here pull through and then you have um, one more stitch on here oops this is there we go I'm stuck okay take this off and then we have one more stitch here but we're going to be skipping behind that one because that one gets slipped and you can see how we have um, the yarn through here. It's nice and long. Um, you can pull on this a little bit, but um, there's no need just yet. We are gonna be removing this slack on here. So you have to remember that this is gonna be uh, stacked up. And now we come to the very first stitch on this round, past the stitch marker, it's gonna be the third peg. And we're going to uh, take our tool and pull downward and make a loop and pull through, and this is knit wise. So if you are doing a traditional knit stitch, usually you make it like this, and we call this uh, knit wise. So we're gonna pull this all the way through, and now you can take this one off, okay? And if you wanna take that stitch marker off, that's fine, you don't need it anymore. All right, go to this next one, and we're gonna pull that down knit wise, and through, take that off. That's our second one, our next stitch here, pull down and through, take it off. Okay. There's our fourth one over here that's left. Pull down and through. Take that off. And there's the fifth one. And pull that off knitwise. And the sixth one. Pull down and through. And take it off. Seventh. And pull that off. And eighth. We have one more left. Pull 
circle down and through. And now we can take this off of our loom. Okay, so we have pulled this off and you can see that we have these uh, two layers of strands that need to get pulled through. So when you pull on this part, it's going to uh, cinch up and pull in the last part that's worked. But if you will turn it inside out, you'll be able to tighten up that inside part. So just go ahead and turn it inside out. Okay, and you can pull through this strand so you can see at least where it starts here. So um, I want to go ahead and start pulling on these strands and tightening it up. I think it's better in this case, uh, rather than pulling and yanking on it from the other side, that you can actually tighten up this inside part um, first. So uh, and then that way you don't risk um, you don't risk uh, getting your uh, yarn broken. So if you tug on this strand here, you can see that it's connected to this. Uh, here and I say strand I mean both strands at the same time okay so um, we want to kind of work our way around we know that it's this strand all the way this lining here and then it comes to this part and follow it all the way around and this is where it began okay so we want to um, have this part tight here and then go to the next so we're going and pulling and I'm going to go ahead and tuck the long tail back in now that we know where we began because we're going to find ourselves on the other side now. So I'm going to keep pulling on this part, go to the next one, pull on this part, pull on the next one. And see how it's starting to cinch up here? Pull on that one. There's a lot of slack in here. Okay, so you can see I've come to where it looks like I'm very tight, but actually we need to go now to the other side and then this will get pulled through. So go ahead and turn it inside out. And now you can start pulling on this tail here. And I can see where it's tightening up. So I'm just gonna go down to the end where it pulls that extra slack out. And you can see this part in the middle now um, pulling in. I'm gonna put my finger here. You see how that tightens? All right, and so now we want to guide these through and tighten this. Look at that. And it cinches up so nice, and it's got a nice closed circle. So now we just need our tapestry needle, and we are weaving this tail in, finishing it off. Okay. So it pulled from that direction, so I'm just going to continue going around these stitches one more time for good measure. And also it doesn't hurt to get some more of the uh, natural cotton fibers in here. Again, if you uh, want to work with another uh, yarn in this, you need to work with uh, a natural wool or cotton like this because it's going to uh, be flame retardant. You don't want uh, acrylic, it will just melt. So with the heat, you definitely want to have that barrier between you and your skin. So we don't want anybody's hands getting hurt. Okay, so now I've got it in there around one time. I'm gonna go ahead and just poke it right through the middle. And then all you have to do is um, put in a knot. So I'm gonna go through a stitch and pull up a little loop, and go through that to knot it. I'm gonna just do that in a couple of places here. Pull through, get a little loop at the end, and pull through again. My tails are too long, they're getting in the way. <laughs> All right. Here's one, okay. And then now you just cut that off. And you're done with that uh, bind off area. And now we want to um, go ahead and flip that back that's your um, area for your fingers. And then now the thumb, we're gonna head, go ahead and pull in this drawstring here. It's gonna operate a little different. You're just gonna wanna be real gentle on how you pull it. I just like to put my fingers on here, kind of help it along. You don't wanna tug too hard. You can also um, pull through the yarn here and ease the tension. So if you need to use your, um, 
needle to help you with that. You can. Okay. Sometimes it just feels like it gets hung up a little bit. And you can see my yarn had a little bit of an issue, but I knew that that would be pulling through. Um, sometimes you just don't get the grab best quality, which is nice of having the two strands because the other one can kind of shore up the extra. Um, if there's a problem with one strand. Okay, so this is pulled in nice and I have a little bit of a hole. So I'm going to weave in my tail with the extra yarn here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. So I'm just going to put this through a few stitches here before I go in. And then go right into the middle and turn it inside out. Okay. And now we're going to go around the hole. Here, I'm going to the opposite side and I'm just really kind of trying to darn in this um, middle part here just to close in any holes. It doesn't have to look pretty. You can see because mine got, um, my yarn got, I don't know, I, I didn't cut it, but sometimes that happens with the, the yarn and I was not worried about it in this project too much, but it'll, it'll go down into it um, when we wash it. All right, so finish darning that in. I'm going to pull through a knot and do a knot in a couple of places. I just really don't want it to come undone. Go back through that. Okay. There we go. Trim it off. Turn it inside out. And there you have it. So this is the side that you put your thumb in and then the finger side right here. And you have your mitt. Yay. Either hand. And look, now you have enough to make two. So one strand held, uh, two, two strands together held as one um, so you have one ball of each color. You can make two of these, or you could make uh, double strands in one color and double strands in the other color. Uh, either way, two balls will make two of these mitts with two strands held together as one. So, oops, I'm gonna turn that, put that one on backwards. <laughs> there you go. Hello. You should make a fingertip pot holder too. Oh, we said that at the same time. <laughs> way to go. I'm proud of you. <laughs> If you got this far, you'll have to tell me uh, finger puppets. <laughs> anyway, I hope you liked that video. I hope this has helped you and you enjoy making some. This would be a fun, like, housewarming, welcoming gift. So um, let me know if you made them. And if you make it, uh, please post on Instagram. It would be great to see yours. Have a great day and happy knitting. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.